Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My very special guest is Ben Kaufman. Ben, thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much for coming to my show. How are you doing? Uh, good. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, it was really good uh, um, seeing you at the Lightning Conference in Berlin. I wish we could have just, you know, sat down more like in a live session and do this like in a, you know, face-to-face -face interview, you know, with my professional equipment because online is always a little bit, you know, um, always irritations. But um, nevertheless, uh, Ben, um, I want to talk to you since you are in Israel and I want to talk to you about the Bitcoin situation in Israel and I know you are... You know, uh, you have a you know really solid knowledge what Austrian economics, you know, the principles of Austrian economics are concerned, uh, such as um, let me see here, uh, uh, like the Keynesian errors on time and demand. That's like a a while ago, like in July from July two thousand nineteen. But I think the other one is yeah is from October fifth, uh, the monetary case for Bitcoin. So anybody, I would urge and recommend suggest to anybody, go to medium.com slash coin monks is that your um your uh twitter uh, your medium handle uh ben yeah sorry if i can lost you oh yeah is that your your medium handle uh medium.com slash coin monks <laughs> oh no no that's uh that's publication here Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's another publication page. Uh, but it's, but it's from you. Yeah, Ben Kaufman. The, uh, your original medium handle is medium.com slash at Ben underscore Kaufman. So mm -hmm. um, I can only really uh, tell you guys, uh, listeners, might um, uh, go and read it. It's it's really goes in depth and it gives you a, you know a deeper understanding of the principles you know of economics and um, Austrian economics. So Ben. Um, First of all, I want to talk to you about, uh, you know, Bitcoin in Israel. What, what is uh, like, uh, what is uh, what is the situation in, in in Israel? How do people? Uh, is it more are, are people more open minded? Uh, that's the feeling I have, the perception I have that people in Israel are more like, you know, whatever it's technology or development wise, they're. It seems to me they're a little bit more, you know, they're a little bit more uh, faster and, and open minded. Is that true? Um, <clears throat> sure. Yeah, I guess so. So it's it's a very small country, so everybody knows everybody, and everybody knows what everybody is talking about. So it's kind of like even even if there is just a minority which is talking Bitcoin, it's surely large enough for every grandma here to to have heard about it at least once or twice. So I guess everybody knows at least has like a vague idea of what it is and the industry at least compared to the size of the country the industry is pretty large here um we have we have many like we have multiple exchanges we have many startups here um working on on multiple subjects bitcoin blockchain stuff um so yeah i guess this is uh, in israel it's a pretty big um it's a pretty big scene here and what what, what about the people uh, do they uh, do you have the impression that in uh, israel you're in tel aviv right uh, i'm like, near tel aviv tel aviv so are people awesome. like do they interact more with bitcoin i mean are there more hodlers are, are there more more hodlers i mean what's your impression what's what is your feeling like um, so I have like I have no idea about statistics or something like that, but I would say that there are a lot of holders um, compared to other countries. So the percentage I would guess is uh, quite larger. Um, there are lots of people which which are interacting with. Like I mean, at least in the in the time of the hype, I remember there were huge talks about it in every corner and people rushing. I guess it was everywhere, but I have a feeling that here was even more. So there were lines in the streets for multiple for the few um, ATMs which we have. So it was crazy. So I, I would assume that we have a pretty large holding base here. Um, besides that, we have we have the Bitcoin Embassy here, which does great job for a very long time here um to to educate about bitcoin we just um, started with socratic seminars 
So we imported them, I think it's from New York, if I remember correctly, which started it. Um, and that's, so we just have the first one, we're gonna get it, I hope we will have it every month and the community, I guess, is, is doing very well here. Yeah. Um, what about the regulatory uh, space? Uh, what is it like? Um, so it's very, I guess it's very strange because I mean, there's a lot of confusion. So the, the authorities always try to, to set some rules and make it clearer. Um, they're working on it, I guess, to tax us as good as they can, unfortunately. But there is a lot of vagueness and confusion still. So nobody, I, I mean, this changes like every day. So rules about it changes every day. Um, the atmosphere, I guess, is quite positive towards Bitcoin. But they still like, for example, they still classify it as, uh, as an asset and not as a currency. Um, unless that change again, everything changes so fast, but I'm pretty sure it's still recognized as not as currency, but as an asset for tax purposes. Um, but there's a lot of work to, to change that and a lot of positive, um, responses from both government officials and, you know, just the regular, um, you know, the business sector and the high tech sector, which is very, very large. So there's a lot of pressure from that. Um, like uh, you, um, uh, um, talking about taxes, uh, because you know in Austria and Germany, it's like uh, they if they wait, like uh, if you wait for uh, like after oh, a year, after twelve months, it's uh, free of ca capital gains. Is it something like similar in Israel? I don't think so. I hope it, I hope it is, but I, I don't think so. Um, I think it's like it's a lot of tax work to, to do. But the, I, I think like the, the authorities are being very, um, maybe patience is the right word for that. So they're very um, taking it easy with, with this new, with this new subject. They're not too, too rough with, with the enforcement on that yet. Um, mm. to, uh, until things are more clear here. All right. Um, great. So uh, Ben, um, before we like move on to some other point uh, here, is there anything like that is special in Israel when it comes to Bitcoin? Would it be you know the usage, the transactional you know space? Yeah, or, it is. The, so yeah. I guess I guess there is just a lot of a lot of um, work done here. So there is a lot of innovation, um, mo many cryptographic big um, solutions coming from Israel. Um, many companies working on such, um, on such uh, innovations. Um, besides that, I think there is a very good sentiment um, of, of just the common people and, you know, and the community uh, in, in large. Um, that is, that's it, I guess. All right. Um... What would it, um, I'm still curious. What what would be like the uh, do do people like hodl because of uncertainty of the, which which you know good good could give us a good segue into the next topic about negative rate interest policy. You know now the green monetary green politics uh, directed by the new direct you know of of the European Central Bank Lagarde. Um, we got the first negative interest rates on deposit or even savings account in the first banks in Germany. So it could, you know, anytime swap over to, you know, other countries during the, you know, European Union. Mm -hmm. Like, do people, do you have to feel in people, are, are people worried at all? I mean, in, in Israel, or are they just relaxed, uh, you know? Um, so I don't think people are very, well, they are stressed about money, of course, like everybody. <laughs> well, more than everybody, but not in this sense. So the shekel, I think, is considered relatively strong and not engaging in as much quantitative, quantitative easing and negative interest rate stuff. You know, they, they are pretty conservative over here compared to the rest of the world. Um, so 
not not from this aspect i guess uh here the, the surface is much much calmer okay what what is your uh let me let me put this on on share screen um uh this article that i also sent you previously um about uh, the, it says on the zerohedge.com, it says floodgates are open, German banks start charging retail savers. Um, how do, wh what is your perception? What, what's your, uh, wh where do you see this going with, uh, with this development uh, and, and negative rate interests and, you know, generally uh, quantitative easing, whatever euphemism, uh, euphemism is, is used for quantitative easing nowadays? Uh, you know, with your, you know, with your solid uh, background knowledge on economics and and Austin economics, where do you see this going with the economy in total? Um, so first of all, obviously not for good, not uh, going to good places. So negative interest rates are like the next step, uh, next evolutionary step of monetary stimulus, um, whatever it is that the, the uh, central banks and governments trying to call it. Um, basically, Keynesians believe that demand is is the driver of the economy. That consumption is the driver of the economy, and they just and if we spend enough, then it will magically make it make us richer. Um, they this is something like I find very important. So they completely confuse your cause and effect. We need to first we have to have capital we have to have things in order to use them in order to spend them um as a society so we don't we can't um let me think so we don't need to just um we can't spend and then hope to have more things we first have more things and then we can spend more so prosperity proceeds not proceeds our consumption and that is a very important thing which they all seem to miss to ignore um whatever it is um so negative interest rates what they're trying to do is just to completely destroy if until now government tried to reduce um reduce our interest rates low very slowly into like the desirable levels, so-called, which they for some reason find as desirable. Now they're just completely discarding the concept of interest rates, so the price. So interest rates are basically a reflection of time preference, um, which is how much we value our times, um, how much we value uh, present goods over future goods. And they are just completely ignoring what what time preferences, what interest rates is are, and they're just um, <laughs> they're just trying to make us destroy all the capital that we have to consume it all. Um, they they're not thinking about the long term. They're not thinking about um, investments and production. Um, they're just they're just short-minded here. So, if people uh, understood more, you know, cause and effect. Uh, do you think people would uh, would logically and more intuitively, more I don't know, um, uh, um, there would be let's say a, a more of a critical adoption of Bitcoin because people would just understand, you know, that we have only one option. That's hard or hardest money. It's it's a money that is you know hard and scarce. Uh, yeah. So. Bitcoin in this regard, I think, is is the best option that we have because all other monies they're just too easily captured by the government. Um, so if gold, everything like is currently a political thing. Um, from everything you sell, you need to report to governments. Government authoritarianism increases. Um, it took them. It took them a while. A few thousands years to completely um, politicize and centralize gold, but they did it eventually. And Bitcoin, I think, is, the, is, is our opportunity to break out of this, to use an, a new technology to basically to defend ourselves from, from this invasion, from this authoritarianism. 
Excellent. You know, the, the status quo that we have, wherever we are, you know, would it be, in, uh, I don't know, Austria, Germany, you know, European Union or any other, you know, continent or, um, I think we, we, most people just take it for granted, right? Because they, 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 don't, they don't know any other system. So even the tax system, you know, uh, people don't even think about whether the taxation, I'm not talking about inflation. Inflation is a theft by itself, but taxation, whether that is constitutional or not, whether that is, you know, has any criminal aspects to it. Um, what's your take on that? I mean, on mm -hmm. the whole yeah, side so effects and symptoms we have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So first of all, the thing I find the most ridiculous that people take for granted is money itself. So what is money? They take for granted that if now money is paper, if now money is, is basically worthless in, in real sense, in the sense of what it is made of, then it must have always been so. It must have always been that money was, um, was some symbol, something like that. This, this increases like the notion of money being some fiction, some invention, something which was planned in order to solve a problem, which is absolutely not like not true. We don't have anything to, to approve such thing. But as Menger explains in his, um, in his principles of economics and even uh, expounds on in his later works, uh, money just evolves from barter. Um, very naturally, no central authority needed to coordinate this change. It's just from people following their, their basic instinct of choosing something which is more saleable compared to something less saleable. So something which they can sell more easily, more cheaply, uh, to find a, find a buyer than otherwise. Um, and this is just why there is convergent on just one commodity or few or naturally one commodity which is the most saleable. And how government just interfered with that is that they slowly through the years, not just the last hundred years, but thousands of years, they started slowly to um, nationalize minting first, um, nationalize banking slowly as well. Um, they started taking control over all this aspect, all this very, very natural aspect uh, of, of the phenomena called money and just completely re remove from it any, any economic sense. So they turned it from an economic phenomena into a political phenomena, which is just, it just strips money from any sense that we currently think of it, that, we, that it truly is. Um, they, they've basically turned it from some market good, from a commodity, into some form of rationing system, I would say. Um, and Bitcoin is, again, Bitcoin fixes it. Um, so it allows us to, to choose a better money. It allows us to choose a true money. Um, but again, so returning to, to the point of whatever it is like about taxes or about anything, people just accept People tend to accept status quo as is. Um, they don't tend to question whatever it is, the political system, the economic system, also the, the ethical system as well. They, they just don't, they assume that something as it is, as they were born into, is the only thing that exists. Um, and that's why I think learning from, from history, learning about the, the medieval times, the ancient form, Greece is so important to, to see the views of, of them, um, to see how, how things could have been different, how they were different. Um, so taxation is again um, is just another concept here, um, just another thing people take for granted that the government needs to tax income, to tax everything basically. Um, and I hope, I, like, I really hope that uh, with Bitcoin, so the greatest hope that I have is that it won't just revolutionize how we, how we deal with money. It won't just revolutionize money itself, but it will more importantly make people actually question their, their behavior, their, cho their choices. 
so not just accept everything for granted so if if they were if the government was wrong about money all this time and bitcoin it, not just it it's not just that it can be money but it is better than any government money can ever be so what else they are wrong about what else do we take for granted um what else should we change um that's that's how i see it yeah that's great great uh say before we go on uh ben uh for my listeners um i, I already had you on remember with uh, eric vasquel um those of those those uh, of you who listen to it I might remember, but can you give a little bit brief background, like of yourself, like where do you, how do you get your all your knowledge? Like, mm -hmm. do you study? Did you study uh, economics, or I mean, you you, you didn't uh, one d doesn't get taught, right? Austin economics. <laughs> <It's> yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so very little places, yeah, teach Austrian economics. So, um, but yeah, so my background is I'm a developer. I've been a developer for about five years already. Um, so that's that's also my day job and everything and how i got into first got to hear about bitcoin through some uh, basically some work stuff and how i started learning about it and everything um but so that's my professional background i guess um my educational background is very very minimal I, <laughs> like i didn't i didn't finish 12 years at school and everything so didn't go to high school um i just quit at like um it was ninth grade i think i just went straight like i knew how to code already so i just started working um so you're not narrow-minded actually because all the geniuses no, I, I know they broke up school so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah I, I really don't like so I never liked being told what to do. I never liked authority that much. I wouldn't say that I was libertarian before Bitcoin, of course, but it did, this is what made me question everything, as I said before, as I hope also for others. Um, but so yeah, I, I never liked I never liked it um, or something. But I wasn't a true libertarian until I got into Bitcoin through this uh, technical background of mine. So, and from then I started learning about what is, what money really is, why Bitcoin is the best money that we have ever, ever, ever had, um, why it is so important um, to just, to dedicate my time for that, dedicate a lot of, you know, a lot of effort to, to this. Um, what about your family or your, you know, friends or, you know, neighborhood or your environment? How do they react? I mean, how do they, how do you talk to them? How do you start talking to them? Because, you know, we all know our experiences with, you know, newbies yes. or, or not, not, not even newbies, but people who are, who could be open-minded, but it always ends, you know, in a disastrous discussion, you know, where you don't know where to start, you know, where to end. Uh. Yeah, I, I just, I mostly like with, with, childhood friends and with family and such i don't talk about with bitcoin that well with my family yes to some extent but not too much but i just don't talk about it that much because it's it get, it gets annoying i guess really okay because most people don't like being told that taxes are theft and everything oh they my god like okay uh -huh. like everywhere um, yeah. yeah yes they like they like paying taxes i guess for some reason um yeah no actually yeah so i i don't try to convince like friends and family i i'm not trying to convince anyone to be honest um, yeah yeah no no convincing sense. is is the bad word is a is actually a, a not appropriate word it's like you know maybe get giving inspiring with you know with a knowledge with uh, or with some kind of foundation which they can which people mm -hmm. can research for themselves and and come back you know come back to taxes i mean principally i'm not saying you know taxes are bad per se i'm just saying mm -hmm. uh the way uh, you know taxes are levied you know the the, the you know the the, the 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 multitudes of taxes and because uh, somehow the structures of course you know whatever the streets the kindergarten whatever the hospitals you know the mm -hmm. elder people they got to be they got to be taken care of, you know, mm -hmm. so, so, you know, but we would probably yeah, so, have a total different civilization. Wouldn't you agree? 
Yes, absolutely. So Thank I you. would say <laughs> yes. So I, I'm sorry, like I'm from a more anarcho capital mind uh, state of mind. So I do think taxes are generally a bad thing. Um, but I like, I mean, this is like a more intellectual thing. So I wouldn't, even though I would aspire for as much an capital capitalist um, state, um, I wouldn't try to implement that, at least not by myself to um, have any efforts to do that. I would aspire to the more like um, probable, if I can even say about such a thing, probable as the liberalism of the 19th century, so classical liberalism. Um, so, but, which is kind of what, what you are uh, talking about. So minimum, minimum government intervention. Um, yeah. So it's not like the best thing, but I would glad, uh, like I would happily compromise on that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree with you. Um, so Ben, now it's your stage. You know, is, are there any like, um, you know, connecting the dots? Because this is, you know, the total connector show. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, not only for myself, but for my listeners, connect the dots, like from your perspective, from your you know, understanding and, and, and knowledge, what is, what is it that people do not understand? What, what is it people should, should, you know, go deeper into the rabbit hole for themselves when it comes to Bitcoin? Um, so I, I just think that they don't understand generally what money is. Um, that's the first thing. So this is, this is how I usually explain it. Well, when I have time and a long conversation, that's how I would explain Bitcoin by explaining the history of money, what it is and how it, it came to be. Um, so that is like the best thing I think they could do in order to, to understand the potential of Bitcoin and why it is important. Um, but not just that. So this is, well, I think this is maybe even the most important, at least in my view. There are also the, there's also the political aspect, which is very, very important. Um, it's of, of course, they are, they're both connected. So the economical and the political, they're tied together. Um, but the economical perspective is, is with more like what we have in China and all the trend of cashless society. Um, so again, this is something which, again, Bitcoin fix. Um, it can, so it can have, help us against this kind of government control, this 1984 style government control, um, which is again, something very, very convincing. So, and the it's one of your favorite books I read on Twitter, uh, right? Yes, yes. 1984 is my favorite book personally. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. Yeah. I just wanted to know why exactly, because I mean, I've, oh. I've... <laughs> it's I just, um, yeah, so I can't explain it, but it's something in it feels so, so real for me. Just so feels I, I, like it is, it feels not like, like a fantasy or some futuristic thing, which is very, very far from us. It feels like we're on a brink on, of, of a sl very slippery slope into very, very similar states. So I'm, I think it just, it, it talks to me uh, in a sense. Um, but there's not just this, there's a lot, a very large literature on that um, from the fantasies. So uh, 1984 and Brave New World. There's also, um, so the, from the non, um, from the political economical side is Hayek's great work, The Road to Serfdom, which is absolutely amazing about, about this subject of how, how basically how socialism, how collectivism more correctly gets us into totalitarian and authoritarian state. Um, and this is why, again, this is another important aspect, I think, for Bitcoin. So these are two uh, two reasons, I uh, guess, which which would very much attract people into the subject. Uh, uh, would you agree with me? People do not really realize in this matrix that we already have aspects of the book of this so-called science fiction book, which is actually reality, uh, more than reality, uh, 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 what we have already. 
uh, starting mm-hmm. in China. I mean, we don't even have to go to China. I mean, we already have. We, we have North Korea, for example. Exactly. No, yeah. nobody talks about that, for example. So mm-hmm. we, everybody talking. Oh, look what what is now starting in China, but they're ignoring that North Korea is way before them, I guess. So that's that's a very very frightening thing, and that's not just whatever happens in, in North Korea or in China. It spreads all over the world. All over the world, governments are infringing the basic rights of people. So from from even like um, I recently saw a very good talk about it, which in relation to Bitcoin, um, I think Alex Gladstein, I think mm-hmm. his name, right? Michael so the, or Alex Gladstein? No, no, no. So Alex, the, the Alex, political the activist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that's his name, right? Mm-hmm. So a very, a very nice talk about the political side of Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, so governments from all over the world, buy from China and also a bit frightening from, from Israel. So we are apparently, we are kind of leading in, world, in the world of like sta- state surveillance on like on very, very specific individuals. So targeting and uh, tracking them and hacking every, everything which is related to cyber we are way too good i guess mm-hmm. and unfortunately uh companies here and i am afraid that also the government is abusing this is abusing it and i mean it was already proven many times in many places i think it was in the case of of um the Saudi um, guy from, you know, uh, in Turkey, I think it was. I don't remember for sure. Uh, Kasho- so, Kash- Kashoggi? No, was that the Kashoggi? guy? Yeah, I yeah, something like that. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, yeah, so that I, I'm pretty sure that they found on his phone like a tracking software of like made in Israel, right. which is very, like, very sad and very frightening. So, yeah. in, in while in Israel itself, it feels that the risk is lower than the rest of the world, at least for me. I feel like in many, many places, especially Europe and to to a small to a lesser extent also the United States, mm-hmm. uh, I guess it's going into that direction. Wow. So uh yeah, the problem is, I mean, would you say the essence of Bitcoin is about freedom, right? Uh, it's about... Yes, yes, about freedom. <laughs> in every, on every level, in every aspect we can yes. imagine, right? Yes, it's about, it's about the, the choice to what mm-hmm. money to use, the ability to hold it. It's, I like how many how people call it the fuck you money because it just... Exactly. Yeah. Whatever you want to, to <laughs> or unfuck, or unfuck them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or Bitcoin unfucks no, you actually. <laughs> no, it just fuck you money because you want to touch it. Then no, fuck you, it's mine. <laughs> you want me to do that and that? No, it's mine. So that's that's described that described very well. Where do you see the challenges for Bitcoin? I mean, when I, you know, we, I just had a also I'm gonna do have a, a series of talks with experts on. Um, you know what happened in Iran with internet shutdown, censorship, yeah, whatever yeah, reasons, yeah, riot, protests, you know, whether instigated or because legitimately because of, you know, this theocratic whatever system putting, uh, you know, um, having it's sort of an oligarchy in Iran, too. So, you know, I'm, I can op- I can speak openly about it because I'm here and I don't care because I care about the people in Iran. But uh, I'm, I'm, th- I'm thinking of technological terms. Um, we need something that is totally independent from the internet. It's really time, you know, with it be mm-hmm. whatever local mesh network with satellite radio frequencies, something that is really like totally private, totally censorship resistant mm-hmm. and, and free from, from, you know, from every, you know, censor, censoring uh, technology or, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I, I really think it's very, very important. We have like, we're starting to see very, um, very promising initiatives. So. The Blockstream satellite for, for like for once we have Gotenna, which is a very interesting project. So, and the Lightning Network itself tries to be like a very very wide mesh networks, so not just so it's not the infrastructure in the physical sense, but it gives another option for a very good communication channel with encryption, everything. Um, this is a very interesting subject by itself. 
Um, but also in connection to Iran, what, what another thing which I really like think is a very nice anecdote here is how government, so you know, Iran and Israel are not like best friends. <laughs> Yeah, you could describe it that like that. But you know what is funny? We have a lot of Jewish people in Iran. This is so funny. Yeah, and I know. The Jewish so... people were actually I heard the ones who helped Iran during the Iraq Iran uh, cre uh, war. Uh, so you know to give them some kind of of you know, whatever technology weapons to defend themselves at least. You know, so mm -hmm. I think there is a really strong Jewish community in Iran. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah. I also heard that there is a very strong Jewish community there. So uh, yeah, until until the revolution in Iran, so Israel and Iran were were in very good relations and everything, mm. and now they just everything got very very bad. Um, but the the good, like the very interesting thing in relation to Bitcoin is, do you remember the uh, lightning torch? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the hops was from a guy in Iran to to the Bitcoin yeah. embassy in Israel. Yeah, I, really. I heard the, because I had yeah, an interview so, with Zia. Uh, he had the oh, torch. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. That's funny. So he <laughs> sent it to to here to Israel, and while you can't really send money from from Iran to uh, to Israel or vice versa, so here we can communicate freely. Here we wow. can. Send this is value. amazing. Yeah. 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 See, this is a sign of peace. You know, I mean, people. You know, they they really want to have peace and freedom. You know, mm -hmm. if if you ask the people. Yeah. I th I'm sure 99.9% .9 they all want to have, you know, prosperity, joy, pleasure, and, and freedom. You know, it all comes mm -hmm. to the basic. Why are we doing this? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just all, I guess, I like Taleb's takes on that. So Nicholas Taleb on that. Mm -hmm. um, all the interventionism basically caused that. So this is, for example, on the Palestinian Israeli conflict, is basically saying that. It was. It would have been solved years ago, decades ago, if not to the interventionism of like large bodies and large and governments. Everything. If people just were left alone to to trade freely, to do the, to do their business uh, alone, you know. And I think this is again, this is a very important aspect of freedom. Freedom enhances, at least in my view, it enhances relations between between people, between nations. Yeah. Um, no. Um, you know, I, I, I always love to ask this question uh, about, um, you know, you read the Bitcoin standard by Safed and Amos. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, you know, on, on page 96 to 98, approximately, he, he compares the gold standard in hard money versus the fiat system and where the original and the so-called, you know, sort of the zero to, to one and the one to many technological, technological innovations mm -hmm. came out. And I mean, what I see, I already see the future on the monetary root laying of Bitcoin, you know, a total different civilization with the technologies coming out, is closed, you know, being, being not suppressed anymore. I, all, I, I know that because uh, there is a lot of technology being suppressed. So, uh, and I'm not a believer, you know, in nation states, in borders, uh, in, you know, uh, so mm -hmm. I, I see this as one planet, to be honest with you. I think with the freedom that we would have then, you know, with all the whatever, layers on top of bitcoin the new ecosystems mm -hmm. the entrepreneurial you know uh, creativity and and the, the the free you know uh, logical rational investment that people would make uh, i would i think it would just serve humanity in a much grander scale that we can imagine do you know where i'm going with this i want to have your take yeah, on yeah. this yeah so uh, unfortunately i don't know i'm not very optimistic so this is why I try, yeah, I try, this is why I try as hard as I can to, to push Bitcoin, but I guess like I uh, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. So I, I'm not very optimistic about the future. I think governments won't accept not just Bitcoin, but freedom. They won't accept freedom. Mm -hmm. um, so, so easily they won't like admit that they lost and just go away and uh, or at least reduce their size. I think they're were in the language for some some you know some hard times um i hope we i hope things will be good afterwards and i hope it will have served you know in the meantime as as a means to to oppose uh, such thing but i'm not i'm not as optimistic about the future unfortunately but you do have a vision right you do have a vision um 
yeah, hopes I hope and vision of what yes, of course. <laughs> hopes everybody have hopes, yeah. I but yeah, I hope Bitcoin will you know will allow global cooperation. So without you know right now central banks, uh, every central banks. Just well, just because like we colored the map in some colorful, you know, we just drew on the map like lands um, in one place and then another, and of two different countries, two different currencies, two different, you know, we can't. We, I mean, we can't. Uh, even the languages people tend to talk the same languages in many places, but the money suddenly is is different. So uh, either even in Europe, the not everybody is using the um, the euro, so there's a lot of mon. I would call it monetary uh, disintegration. So while in in the throughout history it used to be just uh, different weights of gold, different denominations, it used to be the same. You know, and money you could just convert money based on these weights. Um, that that really this, that's uh, like a very important thing for for global cooperation. So for both for calculation, um, for you know, you need to trust the government of a certain place uh, not to or hyperinflate, not to do anything bad in order to invest there, not to work with them, uh, with people there. There are a lot of a lot of barriers, and this is like. If, even without talking about all the tariffs and everything like that, so this is just the the very principle of what what I guess what I call monetary nationalism. Um, so this is just the the problems that this uh, this idea of monetary nationalism causes, um, and I hope Bitcoin can help solve that um, that it can integrate the the global market. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree with you. Um, okay. Um, finally, um, do you do you have anything else like uh, you want to want to share with with my listeners? Anything you um, think it's uh, what, what is your price prediction? Any price prediction? That's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I hope it will. Uh, obviously, I hope it will go up, but I don't mind if it goes down. I just uh, I guess I enjoy the ride. Exactly. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. I'm the worst guy in predicting the price, I guess. And so it's just, it's better to just flip a coin than ask me. And yeah. And hodl, right? It's like Yeah, sets, it's hodl. just to hodl. That's... Yeah, yeah. No, people really need to understand it's a long term um, trajectory. You know, uh, would it be in three years, five years, or in 10 years? This is what we're, you know, mm -hmm. uh, right yes, striving for that's, or, that's or, for the long term yes exactly course. yeah um, and who knows you know by that time is is the you know the fiat going to be around or, or are we just going to talk about the purchasing power of one single satoshi <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i hope so you know that's yeah that would be amazing so ben i really enjoyed talking to you uh you want to share your uh, again your twitter medium handle or any other information um, people can yeah so so if anybody can can reach me can read what I think um, on my Twitter, which is underscore um, Ben Kaufman in one word, uh, B N K A U F M A M. Um, beyond that, I published on Medium from that time. Didn't publish for a while, but I work on another thing. So hope to finish that soon. Um, and yeah, uh, just that I guess. Yeah, hope to get you back on on a panel discussion in the near future it's yeah, great talking to you again. always exchanging great thoughts and and vision <laughs> so ben uh, thank you so much and i'll talk to you soon again all right yeah have a good you. time thank bye. you thanks. bye thanks bye bye